agenda for 7.30. Okay. Okay. How about a motion to continue the application of Johnson Woods Meyer Amendment to June 11th at 7:30? Second. Favor. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. Well, that leaves us uh, waiting until eight o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what, two sets of minutes and so forth? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So you can either do the minutes now or 40 hours. Do the minutes first? Yeah. Do the minutes. I have not listened to you. So the minutes for three times. I'm reading over this um, about down on Haven Street. Is there any, um, so the area in front of um, the dental place, all of that street furniture that was there before was owned by the pizza place? Yep. Is that correct? Yes. So there's no street furniture or anything through that, like at all, anywhere on down on Haven Street? Um, in front of Pamplemousse, they put a little table. Um, maybe they take it in? They, I think they yeah. only have it out in the, probably in the warmer months. Because um, that would be great if we could, if there's, you know, some grant money around, um, if there's some way that we can mm. do something there. It probably that wouldn't area. be that much money. Um, PDA sponsor. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> that would be nice. Yeah. But literally, the only places you could sit down is on a stone wall somewhere up the street. There's literally no place to right. activate them. Right. Yeah, it's a good point. Um, I don't have the ability to take that on right now. No, I know. I just, um, I just but I, we yeah, can certainly I make a note of it that, and. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe when we're back to being fully staffed, that's something yeah. we could look at. Yeah, because between the foot and ankle place, they're not putting any seats outside. You know, <coughs> dental is it? No one is interested. Yeah. So. It may be possible that Pamplemousse would be interested because yeah. they do do um, sandwiches at lunchtime. That may be something they'd be yeah. interested in. And I've seen a lot of models out there, like uh, Brookline. Um, I think it's Brookline Village. The Merchants Association all get together and buy the street furniture and put a little thing on it. And there's a lot of interesting things that could be done, so it's not just the town oh, doing yeah. it. And then everybody buys in, which is kind of nice, too. So, we'll make a note of that, sure.
question on page three, and at the bottom, the second to last paragraph, where it says, Mr. Rizzo asked the audience what, what regulations they would want if a box were proposed next to them, which actually said a box. Yes. Or a big box. Just a box. Just we start at the box. That's where you go. Four walls, nothing. And move on from there. CPDC approve the minutes for the meeting of March 26, 2018. Still a building. Second. All in favor? Zero. Zero. Yeah. Um, on the, on the, on the four nine. Minutes, mm -hmm. um, which extends to the folks that are coming today. At the end here, um, uh, page eight, last major paragraph here. They were the applicant is meeting with the conservation on Wednesday. Um, the, the site plan approval expires in May, and then an extension was already granted. The applicant can start site work to exercise the permit if the Conservation Commission agrees. I don't recall this whole back and forth, and the reason I'm bringing it up is I drove by and there's been some clearing of the land there, and I just want to know if that is related to... So from what I know is they've put hay bales there. She might be able to explain more to start site work so that the it doesn't expire and get okay. rolled over, so that was the reason that was for that. So that's what that was. Yeah. Right. right. Okay. Yes. We wanted to avoid expiring that permit, and we said any <coughs> site work would trigger active work. So okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I figured that was all connected. Yeah. <laughs>
Page seven. So it's the second paragraph up. It says, "This is something we've been talking about all time." So it says, "To confirm the building height is the same." But when I looked at the wrong, it means like right. Right. So I think so that's been addressed, and they got it. Um, I think it's the same. Yeah, height of building is 36 feet. So they corrected the use wrong. Right. Connecting it to here with the forty five so um, six first bullet at the bottom forty five fifty five building, is that what you're saying? That's not thirty six? No, the height. Yeah, the height. So on the elevation. Where are you? Oh, on page seven. That's a paragraph about Mr. Jose confirmed the building head is the same. It's true. But the drawings show something different. Yeah. Okay. Okay. get started at the appointed hour. Um, so I'm sure most of you noticed that there's a prominent piece of property on South Main Street that's on the market now. The site that's got a for sale sign on it, um, commonly known as the Smith Oil site, next to the um, well, e-cars. I call it doggy day here, but that's not the name. Whatever it's called. So bed and ben biscuits. Ben bed and biscuit, yeah. Yeah. So that's Pet Companions, Bed and Biscuit. And now that um, site that has a couple of houses, we through an enforcement order just had one of the dilapidated houses demolished. Um, that came down two or three months ago. So now the property's on the market and I've gotten a few calls about it. <laughs> well, I'm I'm <coughs> Suggesting to people to look at the um, South Main Street best practices, design practices. Um, so there's that. Um, I'm also encouraging them to talk to conservation. Make sure we know what's what back there because. Yeah, there's, there's a drop off. Yeah, big drop. Yeah, and um, even when they were doing the demolition, 
we needed conservation to be involved. I, don't I can't remember. Was bordering vegetated wetlands? Probably it's definitely bordering something. It's definitely. <laughs> I mean, when I walk the back way, that's a huge. I've never actually been back there, and I, yeah. I don't trust the GIS, but I know there's something back there. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. So where is that relation? To, I can't place that. Um, according to what's across the street, where is that re in relation to um, to the new whatever? Um, they'll have a new neighbor, right? Um, well, hmm. we've got the. <laughs> you don't do that. <laughs> no. no, I go one side at a yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The, the one that came before us in the um, in the winter time, yeah, yeah. it's right across the street. The the one that's slightly cl closer is the I don't know, wax and nails or something oh, like that. Yeah. It's like a green building that's yeah. directly across. I go, you're nuts. I'm done with you. So, okay. But it, it does include the the house and the parking oh, yeah. lot component too, because I saw the sign is in front of the brown house, yeah. and I wasn't sure if it was just oh, so a vacant lot or if it was the whole lot. I think it's only, it's one lot. I'd have, to, I'd have to verify it on the map, but I think it's one lot, and I think that's what's for sale. I mean, I did see they were moving, they had these like boats in the way back for a super long time. It looks like yeah. one of them came out this weekend. Yeah, they had a for sale sign yeah. on yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I thought maybe it was a whole thing. Yeah, I mean, it looks like the eastern, potentially the eastern is like property is Park and Park. Okay. It's that far back. Yeah. That's really deep. That's so great. So hopefully they have enough room to work. Yeah. Oh, the actual brook. I was like, it's not walking. Yeah. <laughs> so actual brook. That's brook, perfecto. Yeah. See the corner of perfecto? Yeah. In the brook. In the brook, <laughs> yes. And so that arc, the little dark arc. Interesting, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I also okay. noticed that the there's the big red X on the uh, building next to Dynamic Sports. Yes, that that's another property that we're using enforcement orders to um, get demolished. We've, okay. we've had, I think, three buildings. We've had to actually go to court with the property owners to get them to move on it. We tried any number of ways to work with them and not have it be a burden, but we got very concerned about public safety. So funny, so happy. Well, the other thing, the uh, three-story office building that was the once upon a time rattle. rattle. Any further information on what's I haven't going heard on heard not a thing, nothing. Does the lot that we just started talking about, the one? Yeah. The yeah, the last conversation the was that they were waiting for the curb cuts. From the state. That's very possible. Yep. That was Jack did that one too. I don't remember. The old Valerie's bridal shop. Any updates? No. I'm not involved with that. Anymore. No, no, it's not yours. Okay. Okay. I mean, Doyen's has been proceeding mm -hmm. visibly. Yeah. Looking much better. And how about uh, Burger King? Burger yes, King. Yeah. Can't wait for that. Is that time. Burger King? That's Burger King. I heard it's, big, heard it's Burger King and um, Panera, uh, Popeyes. It's what all the kids a, want. The Angelo's, Papaginos kind of thing. You know, they're they're having more than one restaurant. Yeah, so it, it wouldn't surprise me. That's what I heard. Okay. It's smart if it is. But it's, it's a nice refresh on that. Yeah. Thing. Very nice. It's, it's, now it makes McDonald's that McDonald's look even older. It does. <laughs> Hopefully when this comes online, the rest of the dollars business will completely be <laughs> 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 Yeah, it's almost totally gone now. We need, to rework we need some better traffic patterns. Just a traffic pattern. I know. Right now. That's I got know. stuck at it this weekend. I started shaking my foot. <laughs> 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 my daughter got, my daughter's car got wiped out by somebody trying to sneak through the driveway that's open there. We crossed four lanes. I also think I saw um, folks exiting from the back of the Sunoco station where there was still like, a car being held back there. But I saw folks this weekend, it looks like they were cleaning up. Yeah. Um, well, that's the good stuff. I guess I could talk to you about the 40B conference that I was a speaker at last week. 
um, at Bentley College. So the Reading model was up on the screen and the 40R and they were very interested to find out how we used 40R zoning and so on. My panel was on production, housing, uh, affordable housing through production. And so um, it will be posted on the chapel website, the presentation, if anyone's interested. Um, there were other, Andrew went, which was great. There were other panels. One of them was um, uh, public engagement, which Andrew went to, said it was good. Um, so it's, it was really interesting. And they've invited me back uh, to Mass Housing this Thursday to be on another panel to talk about affordable housing that CHAPA is supporting. They just came out with a report on 40R. And the, the things that are working, not working. So we're going to have a panel discussion um, Thursday, I believe it's at 9.30, but I'm not That's sure. this Thursday? That's this Thursday. But I can send you guys the information if you're interested um, at Mass Housing. So, question. So, I'm still getting my head mm -hmm. around this. If Lincoln Street had been part of the Smart District, which it was, at uh, one time, it was in the Smart Growth District, and then it got removed. So, if it was in there, would that Reading Village, Village. Have, have not been able to go through as a 40R? Uh, a 40R. <laughs> Let's rewind the tape and say yeah. that it was included in the district. They still could have come, come forward with a 40B. That's what I yeah. was trying to okay. yeah. But it would have been less problematic, less time, less money for them to go through the 40R process. Exactly. Because they had all those rights. Exactly. So, so it would have been more likely that they would have gone through the 40R, 40R because it would have been cheaper and easier for them yeah. than going Wouldn't through the 40B. Wouldn't have cost them a year. Right. Right. Well, they, they, they still had the problem with buying the gas station on the corner. So they, they had to assemble the properties. Yeah. Which was moved. Yeah. And the 40R would not have necessarily made that easier. But you don't know, you don't know what the seller's motivation would have been if the project had been on the friendly side as yeah. opposed to sort of this antagonistic group came in and the whole neighborhood hated. Yeah. And they're still showing up at the Board of Selectmen meetings and saying that there's problems with the project. It was one the neighborhood. Yeah. You mean? Yeah. Mm. This one very recently um, that there was discussion about some of the site conditions. Um, DEP, of course, has a whole file on um, the soils, and naturally, it's an urban fill project. So um, it's not surprising that they came across some things that needed to be dealt with. Um, but it became very um, inflammatory at the Board of Selectmen's mm -hmm. meeting. And the Board of Health Chair has been working very closely with the DEP officials to make sure that we're all on the same page with this before we do anything, and, and we are. So there's really no, <coughs> there's no issue at all. They, had a, they made a mistake with some reporting requirements, and they missed some time frames. But other than that, there is no issue. It did sound like there was some communication. It's not fair. We, well, we sat down with them months and months and months ago at one of the very preliminary meetings. We said, how about if you set up a website? That way the neighborhood can um, see what's going on all the time. And they said, well, we don't think we really want to do that. And then they went to the Board of Selectmen meeting, or the select board, SB. And somebody on the SB said, why don't you have a web website? And they said, that's a great idea. <laughs> 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 Which means that they Welcome found somebody. Welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> they found somebody to do it for less money. Yeah. <laughs> no, they just finally realized that communication Lack of communication was it's costing them. Probably costing more them. Than, yeah. it, um, they've <laughs> had to come to the select board meeting twice that I'm aware of to defend what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, there's a constant series of criticisms that are going their way. I think with clear communication, yeah, all that could be avoided. Proactive yes. work at all. Yes. 
So I think they do have a uh, website. I, I don't know if it's actually up and running, but I know they're doing that, and they've had meetings with the neighbors. So that's sort of going back in the right direction again. Right. Yes? Um, that's all right, Ms. Lockport. Don't they also have an enforcement conference with the DEP, which my understanding is a concerning step in the development? I mean, how I don't know how often enforcement conferences take place in town with developments, but my understanding is that is not an insignificant meeting. Yeah, they met last Thursday. And from what the emails are, and I'm only going by emails, I don't have actual documentation from the DEP, but I know the Board of Health Chair has spoken in some length DEP. The enforcement hearing that was held last Thursday was specifically and solely related to the um, reporting time frame that they missed. So when you discover something, it has to be reported within 120 days, and they failed to do that. And that's 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 an issue. Um, but it's my understanding that it was a time frame issue. We'll keep an eye on them. There's lots of eyes on them. The, the, the real uh, final point I'd want to make is that, as I'm sure most people know on this board, the licensed site professional is the gatekeeper of what happens with the um, DEP, with the soils issues. That licensed site professional um, is obligated to be monitoring the activity. And who is that? Um, I don't have the name off the top of my head, but it's a it's an uh, environmental engineer mm -hmm. with all of the correct titles. That um, it, all of the information is on the DEP website. I can send you guys the link if you want, so you can see it. You can see the every report, every enforcement letter, DEP posts, everything on the website, so it's completely transparent. I can send that for sure. Okay. All right. Why don't we get started with the um, major modification to the proof site plan for 306 Main Street. Um, Have some updates. Yes. Oh, nice. Uh, good evening, members of the board, members of the city staff. Thanks for having us again. I'm sure I see Andrew uh, has our drawings up here. Um, so we thank you all for your insightful comments um, at the last meeting. And uh, we've gone ahead and submitted some revised drawings which take into account uh, particularly the uh, architectural features that were discussed to try to improve the uh, curb appeal um, and uh, functionality and uh, mind compliance um, of the building. Uh, primarily, you can see that we added a small bump out to the front of the building, revised the uh, shape and size of the dormer, and uh, added some awning. Uh, other architectural details uh, to the exterior to uh, to just uh, improve the uh, the look and the presence of the building. Unfortunately, our architect is not able to be here today, so hopefully, I'll be able to answer uh, any questions regarding the uh, architectural design on his behalf. We also uh, did remove the site lighting. Um, and I believe that is, that pretty much encompasses the changes that were made. Okay. Um, <coughs> I saw a comment either by the building inspector or the town engineer that the square footage required additional parking. So I did have a chance to stop by the building department uh, today, put some extra miles on my car between here and Cambridge, um, and I spoke with uh, Andrew as well as Paul because unfortunately 
uh, the building commissioner, who the notes came from, was out of the office, so we were able to get him on the phone. Uh, and what we were able to determine through discussions is that what he was referring to is right now at 5100, we hit 17 on the nose exactly at 300, uh, one per 300 square feet. And the additional space would be the additional loading space uh, that would be required that was weighed in the previous, uh, in the previous uh, decision. So um, that being the case, uh, you know, we are hoping to continue that waiver of that additional loading space and be okay with the 17 uh, parking spaces as are on the approved plan from the Conservation Commission. What about the comment that uh, an area named attic can have a bulk there at? Sure, I was also uh, wondering what that meant as well. And uh, if we look over here, uh, where Andrew, oh, I can hear Andrew about it, I think. Mm -hmm. um, where, you, where Andrew has his cursor over here, you can just see that there was an access door to the uh, unfinished area. So we'll just uh, remove that door. Okay, so that was his concern, not that there's a full stair up to the space. Exactly. That was the understanding of that, speaking to uh, Andrew, Greg, and, uh, and Paul. So, the 630 square feet in that picture mm -hmm. is the exterior zone. What is that T? Is that the so subset of the 630? Sure. So, the, the T is what is included, it, kind of that central area, which is the finished area. And that's what's included uh, in the square footage number. Okay. Um, and that will be the only finished area. The other areas will just be, uh, you know, unfinished rafter space and not accessible to get rid of that door. Mm -hmm. You'll probably have some kind of removable access panel. I yeah, I assume we'll have HVAC and whatnot in there. Um, so uh, there'll probably be some way to crawl into the space, but no way to be in the space. Yeah. I just don't think they want you storing stuff in there, so yeah. don't stack your files in a space that doesn't have smoke detectors or something like that, for example. Right, and as you may recall, uh, unfortunately, uh, my client is stuck in traffic, but uh, he should be here at some point. They do have very rigorous uh, data storage protocols and certainly mm -hmm. wouldn't want to store things in unfinished areas. As you know, they're electing voluntarily to put a sprinkler system in, a sprinkler system in even though they don't need one, uh, because they do need to um, protect their files. Yeah, I, I suspect uh, I'm that... I'm sorry, I see these little tiny attic things. Got it. Well... <laughs> <laughs> two, two things. This is uh, pa this is page A four, I guess. The uh, first off, the area in the the label in the middle it should, should probably say third floor storage space rather than yeah. attic okay. Okay. to satisfy the. And yeah. then there is the door. Uh, there's both a, what appears to be a hatch and a door that need to go away. So I'm sorry. What is what are you referring to? Well, this is up to the upper part of the roof. Okay, on the, the diagram one. There's probably a, a ceiling here in there that access hatch gets you up to the whatever's left. Okay. Of the on the attic plan, see on the uh, left, yeah. right, right there, yeah. Right here. I mean, David was just questioning why you have an access to attic hatch when you're in the attic, and I'm trying to explain that there's a ceiling. Right. Right. Okay. And the, the door there is the thing that will go away. Correct. Okay. Okay. So to just re-clarify, 630 third floor <coughs> storage space is part of the 5100. Yes. Yeah. But the little tiny, tiny word addicts. Exactly. Is not. Correct. And that's yeah. what the building is referring to. Correct. Mm -hmm. That's my understanding. Okay. 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 So, I mean, they provided some markups, some notes, some comments, but it looks like they were just transposed, literally just transposed, where they were just supposed to be suggestions, and they weren't transposed correctly either. <laughs> and so because you just transposed them, I'm going to actually make you fix them, okay. or you're going to pay my fee. <laughs> so see that, see that accent band that runs above the first floor doors? This one? Uh, or this one? No, yeah, the lower one. Between the first and second floors, there's an active band. If you look at the side elevation, you'll see it better. Okay. Yep. Originally, in the original pizza building, that was a wide band. And that's what I had suggested it should remain as a wide band. 
all the way around the building, not this narrow band. So that the awnings, for example, are covering this portion of it on either door. And then as you come around to your new bump out, your sign would fit in the band, not, not an applied sign like that. Yes. Um, yeah, I had suggested you just you consider uh, halo lighting on the band instead of that, or just apply the letters to the band as opposed to having an applied sign, which is kind of a lower end finish to your building. And I think you're going through all this effort. You're, you're basically building the band anyways as part of the sign. You might as well just have your wall be behind it and just apply your letters to that. Otherwise, it does just look like a sign. And then the next person who owns it might come back and put in a slightly, slightly smaller sign, and it'll be the sort of unfinished back. back to it. So those are my two comments on that. The band should be continuous all the way around. It should be the original width, whatever you want to call it. And it should be continuous behind the sign. And I think your sign should be integrated into that band rather than, say, applied to it. Um, I, you are much more architectural than I am, but the the bump out uh, changes the character or it changes the issue because the the bump, the band, if you will, would not be all on the same plane. That's okay. Uh, I mean, if they're going to have corner boards on it, it would stop and start the corner boards. The corner trim. Look at the look at the um, so when you look at the elevation on A5 and you look at the front elevation, right? The sign comes to within four inches of the corner board, right? Either left and right side of the sign, mm -hmm. there's platform behind it, so it's just like what is that? That makes no sense to me. It's just there's our sign, it's sort of applied to the building. It's not integrated with it, I think it. I think it'll look funny, but it'll look cheap to me. It won't look like it's something that was thoughtful. Um, is there a, I don't recall if we've seen a um, uh, color selection board. So uh, I did send uh, Andrew a preliminary color rendering, which uh, I know Oh, we don't, the, sorry, sorry, no, the renderings, we need to actually see a sample board okay. to understand it, because we've had um, misunderstandings with color in the past. We want to avoid that. Sure. We learned the hard way. That's, well, that's okay for showing your intent, but right. you should deliver some samples to uh, to Jean, and they can okay. understand what the color will be. Okay, yeah, yeah. definitely. I think we're kind of like pre-final selection on the material palette right now. Um, but as we make those final selections, we can definitely deliver them to Eugene or whoever they need to go yeah. to. Uh, Andrew and myself. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, for, you know, review and approval. So it's like a bluish or greenish? Yeah, I think kind of a, a light, light green, light okay. blue green sea foam. This is why we want to see the material yeah, samples. Yeah, of course. And, you know, as would I, I just think, again, they're not quite up to that uh, yet, but are uh, definitely happy to keep you guys involved in that decision-making process. Should it be a green building with green awnings? I was going to say I would consider dark awnings or they're going to look dirty really fast. I don't like the awnings. I hate awnings. <laughs> well, not the round, shiny, plastic ones. It should be, you know, linear. Um, the ones on Sam's Bistro came up, they look really nice. There's actually no, absolutely no um, Fusilli, grill. Yes. Yeah. They yeah. look rich. Yeah, they do look nice. Mark the edge. Okay. So yeah. one thing I'm just, I was just noticing, like, is, um, so this is that mortgage place down yep. the street, there's a Remax, and has that straight, and it's a thick band here. Right. And then similarly, um, at the Boardwalk Realty. Okay. And I recommend that they looked at that building. Yeah, um, it's also the same wide band that you're talking about. No more. <laughs> the, so the, the uh, Remax building, 
That's not even trim. That's uh, shingles. I it's think they shingle. just changed materials, so they went from yeah. a, a siding to a shingle within that bandwidth. You could do that as well. It's yeah. probably less expensive than say trim boards for that width. So See. the horizontal band, mm -hmm. you just change the material as it's from a from a siding to a shingle or something like that. You know that would probably work as well. Just so you've, you've got a lot of height now, and so these, this band looks kind of tiny. And it's not really anchored to anything. It's not anchored at the top of the window or the bottom of the window at the top. And so whatever you do there, you know, on that band, you could also do into the dormer material because that looks lost up top there. Again, you know, I, I sent a sketch in that just said, you know, do something here. And all they did was copy my note without really working it out. It's not worked out. Sure, you know, I mean, obviously I can't speak to the architect's design intent uh, since he's unfortunately, as I mentioned, not able to be here today. Um, you know, I think looking at it, perhaps the reason he chose not to wrap the band all the way around was to kind of create that distinction, uh, as you see in the, the color palette as well, between that kind of central volume uh, and the kind of the larger volume which it protrudes from. Um, yeah, I don't mind the, the change in the in the projection. I'm just saying that that third floor, that third floor will feel heavy because it's the same materials that it has the bottom as opposed to changing. Okay. Then while we're here, the um, renderings on sheet A1 appear to show small awnings underneath the sun. Now I don't know in, in addition to the ones on the side. Where? Yeah. I think you're I think, you're I think those are shadows. I think that's this thing. The side? I think it's transparent. Just a weird, it might be the yeah, sides. A weird, a weird way of doing the on it. Yeah, it's transparent right there, too. Mm. Oh, by the way, we don't allow transparent on it. <laughs> <laughs> but they're labeled as opaque. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, we know what opaque means here. Yes, we, we do. Climb up and down Main Street and show you what opaque means. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's a rendering issue, uh, not yeah, an intention. Yeah, yeah, I, I, do not, I do not predict uh, some <laughs> fabulous clear plastic on it. <laughs> So that's what that is. Okay. We corrected um, the height. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, that's all I had, really. Anybody else have any um, So I want to understand what's going on with lighting now. You said <laughs> that the site lighting has been removed. Sure. So that means the pole lights in the parking lot are gone. Okay, so what's in his place. Right, so at this point there, we're showing uh, no lighting on the site. I think the main uh, thing behind that was, you know, kind of, uh, you know, we heard, you know, both here and at the Conservation Commission, a lot of concerns about lighting pollution. I think that they felt that um, this being a very nine to five type of business and not like a nighttime business, I mean, might as well just um, eliminate it uh, altogether unless you know, it was suggested to us to, uh, to walk that back a little and bring something back in, uh, we'd be open to hearing about that. But we just didn't feel like it was uh, an operating necessity for this particular business. But it's dark out in the winter at 4 o'clock. Right. So when employees are leaving the building, there's no illumination? Right. I don't even know if that's allowed yeah. under yeah. code. Are there any exits on the back? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, no, we only have the exits are only on the front back. Okay, so I mean, those will have lights. Those will have to be wall, some sort of wall. Yeah, have wall packs. Okay, so we can definitely look into some, you know, building mounted floodlights or uh, something like that, perhaps motion activated, um, just to make sure that we have a safe environment to bring it down to a, a minimal level. But nothing also in the front? I mean, Sorry. Sign would be the only thing that's lit. Yeah. Yeah. Seems rather. Yeah. 
what kind, what kind of lighting uh, do you like to see on this type of building? Are you looking for a kind of a landscape lighting, building accent lighting, you know, kind of floodlights for the area? So, you know, we're happy to provide uh, whatever, obviously whatever we need functionally from kind of a building code, light safety perspective, but also obviously kind of want to blend in with whatever that the, uh, you know, kind of planning board expects to see in the area. Right, so life safety will make you put a couple of lights at each entrance door. Those should be down lights, right? You shouldn't see the light source. Nothing with a lot of glare. On the back, you're probably going to end up mounting something on that wall to light your parking lot, which is for safety. So if they're on that band, you know, I, I don't think conservation is going to want their bare bulb floodlights just pointing out to the back. Sure. The closest residence is kind of behind, uh, and if you're facing the building to the left. I believe their kind of their backyard is kind of their deep backyard is what kind of wraps around behind it. Um, but that said, you know, obviously we have no need or desire to light the very back of the site where we just have uh, you know wetlands and conservation areas. So certainly all the lighting would be focused around the building and the proximate um, park area. And I think there's going to be a six foot high fence installed at the 25 foot buffer zone to the wetland line. So th that was just in case there was any headlight glare that did reach that residence. So that that's already shown that there's a six foot high fence. Sure. Are you talking about Percy Avenue? They show that on the, that is per Percy Avenue? Yes. The rendering shows the black pool. I don't see that on the site plan, right? Might not be Percy Jean. I'm looking at we here like to have the flagpole um, absolutely uh, provided that that is uh, acceptable and we will add that to the site plan. Okay, well that has to be loaded. Okay. Yeah, so we gotta take it down right now. Percy. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. So this guy had no service. Okay. You have to light the flag or you have to take it down. Right? So that's why we put the fence yeah. on the back. <laughs> <laughs> So I just wanted to clarify point three. You're saying it has not been modified to a multi-tenant building, but you did make the modification so that it could be, which was the suggestion. So no, it was an odd sentence. Right, no, we, I, I apologize if it was poorly worded. Uh, we elected to completely let the multi-tenant uh, concept go, and we're just going to design this to purely be a single-tenant building. We've let go of trying to get two types of signage approved. We are only going to go for the building power and sign, and we are only going to go for a single tenant configuration, certainly. Okay. I mean, it did look like you moved floor plans and the two entrances that the two entrances were already exi already existed. You activated them more in the prior. I think we just wanted to uh, kind of make the exterior look a little bit better, um, but we didn't kind of change the configuration of the entrances. They just are, are as they were before to have those uh, kind of two entrances on on either end, and uh, we are at this point not uh, pursuing a multi-tenant approach. question about snow storage <coughs> where is that on the plan the site plan and might be on the landscape plan okay so 
there's only a limited amount of snow storage right behind the dumpster area. And the there's dumpster. an area, the dumpster recycling area. There's a small area for snow storage here. Otherwise, everything's going to have to be taken off site. I think that was a condition of the when Pizza World was approved. Because on the perimeter here, we have we have three rain gardens, so you can't put any snow in those BMPs. That, that area behind the dumpster is grass. Grass. It'll be grass, and that's where you want to place snow so it can filter back through. And how big is that area? It's small. It's very So you can only put, I don't know if I put a square footage on there. It looks like it's 12, at the widest, it's 12 feet. Yeah, I mean, if it's if the uh, dumpster pad is 12 by 12, that's, that's, about, right. that's about 12 by 15 or so. Yeah. It's not a large area. So for any snowfall over an inch or two that falls, would have to go off-site. Well, it'll either go off-site or you lose the uh, three of the tandem spaces, which is not, not the end of the world, maybe. Well, isn't the concern there that it... You're now going too close to the weapon? No, we're far enough away from the weapon. You're okay there? Yep. But we couldn't we couldn't store snow in it. We don't have extra parking spaces to store snow. Right now we're the way it's set up now with the use for the building, we're we're the parking spaces we have are the parking spaces we need. In some other cases, if I have a few extra spaces, I've used those for emergency for storage. Maybe internally they'll do that, but from a zoning perspective, they're supposed to keep all their spaces active. Just one comment on this. Uh, we don't see the business really needing a big area for dumpster. Right now, we don't use any of that. So the area for the dumpster if one could also be used to store. Are you you don't have a very, a very big need for the outside of the uh, yeah, you're, it's an office. You're in an office, yeah. It's an office. Yeah, I agree. Trash. So are you building the dumpster pad and the enclosure? Or not? I'm showing it that way. Yeah, we, 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 we will, but that's what I'm saying. This, if it's needed, we don't need a real dumpster out there, just those barrels. Oh, you're going to put the barrels outside? That's it, yeah, just the barrels. So if you need it, we could use that, some of that for snow and if that's the you, You're not going to get the snow in there if you have a fence around it. Yeah. And the plow will ruin the, yeah. land, the, ruin the fencing the around it. Don't put it in and keep your trash yeah. inside or, or uh, you can't use it for snow storage. You won't be able to. We, we don't have a large area for snow storage, know, but that was that. the original design we didn't need that. Just something they're going to have to manage. Yeah. I can guarantee you that if you start pushing it into the wetlands, the uh, conservation will be on you. So. Oh, yeah. <coughs> yeah, since Mr. Sullivan knows quite well. <laughs> yeah, and, and the rain gardens, you can't push it you no. know, on, into that. You'll kill the plants. And Right. What's the landscaping in the front? A couple of trees. Yep, two two trees and I can't see. Arbor I think we have two three inch caliber trees. Three inch caliber, two red maples, and you have um, flowering perennials, yews, yep. azaleas, and golden guinea caria. And the arborvitaes are along the back. Six feet high, 11 of them. When planted, yep. And that will give you a, um, a vegetated screen in the back. That's what, something that will stay green year round. Mm -hmm. And you said there's a fence back yep. there too? And you can see we have a proposed six foot high PVC fence along the 25 foot line. And that, w that was for the, one of the members brought up, there's a residence back off of Percy over here. It was mm -hmm. just 
if there's any headlight glare, right. which we don't anticipate, but the fence was put in. Okay. So with the combination of the plantings and the fence, we should be in good shape. Mm -hmm. The fence goes around the whole back of the site, but it doesn't go on the side, right? right. Correct. It goes from that here, right along the whole yep. 25. Also, when it was the pizza shop, there was a concern if trash, cardboard, they didn't want anything blowing to the wetland either, even though the dumpster's enclosed. Um, just another level of protection to protect the wetlands. Don't you think the vegetated screen is going to do it? I don't understand why you need that white PVC fence. Came up originally with, when Pizza World came in, there was a letter from that abutter. Oh, okay. Concerned. And the butter never attended any public hearings, but it, I think there was something in writing, so we just put it in. Okay. Can you not do white? Can you do one of the brown fences or something? Like so a stockade? No, no, I mean, it could be PVC if you want. That's oh. less maintenance for you, but... Yeah, that's fine. Just so it's it's just of, so screechy white. The, the white will look pretty harsh back there. Yeah. And the brown will just kind of blend back into the wet. We're fine with that. I mean, whatever you do. But no, it, it doesn't have to be white. Yeah, we didn't really call. We just said six foot high PVC fence. I, I, we didn't specify a color, so. Okay. Can we review that along with the color palette? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we're better off doing that. If we take it away, we're going to run Yep. Yep. We know about fencing. And 11 Arbor Vitae don't really do all no. that much, so. Mm -hmm. So no, it'll but break, hopefully it'll break up the fence, I but it will won't. provide screening. But hopefully the wetland area in the back will start to overgrow, right? That'll sort of fill in. It should. I believe uh, as part of our condition with the Conservation Commission, we will be uh, submitting Bring on a Landscape Architect and uh, Landscape in the Wetland as well as that, right, Jeff? That's right. So you will. Yeah, so we're going to be bringing in some plants in that area as well. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll copy this board on what the Landscape Architect That'd comes be up good. with. That'd be good. Okay. That was going back to when it was a gas station. There was there was supposed to be a, a planting plan in this this rear area that never was completed. Oh. Um, they've asked you know for us to do something additional. So we said we would. Whatever we do, we'll copy you on. Okay. Great. Um, this doesn't approve the sign, by the way, right? It's still have to come in for a sign. Correct. <coughs> Do we need to come in? That's an administrative sign in this district, is my understanding. No, it doesn't come for the year that we Yeah, the sign permit's administered by the building inspector. Okay. You, your intent is to light that sign? With exterior lighting or with an internal light? Um, no preference. Whichever one you guys suggest. Uh, my preference would be for some sort of halo. I like that, that idea. Would look really nice. You know what that is? That's just basically like a solid letter and there's a light behind the letter. So it lights up behind it. That's a nice thing, yeah. Yeah, those are really nice. Stop who has those around. Embellish had it, but they're closed. Embellish had it. That was really nice. Who <laughs> uh, else? The bank by the old Walmart. Which one is that? The bank by the old Walmart. How Walgreens? Walgreens? Uh, you talking about Danvers Port or? Yeah, yeah whatever is closed. Eastern? I don't know. Danvers Bank. <coughs> Oh, the people's lighting. people's people's bank. people's bank for saving. So right. essentially, cut out letters that are yeah, cut out backlit. solid letters that yep. are backlit. Yeah, channel. it's like a halo yeah. behind yeah. it. It's a good idea. Just did that exact thing. A very Those nice project. Nice. Restaurant in Brooklyn. Okay. Yeah, it's a nice okay. look. Very clean. <clears throat> and I, I did want to comment that the uh, change of the architectural facade, the bump out and the, the tower look is, is very nice. Thank it's you. It's a, a good change. Thank you, Mr. Sabina, as well for the suggestion. Yeah. 
have a time frame for when you want to get started? I mean, we are anxious to get started as very soon as we possibly can. Um, obviously, you know, kind of been doing our best to get through the processes, and as soon as we're through it, we're, we're ready to start. There's nothing holding us up other than um, the regulatory process. Mm -hmm. And you know that um, Mondays and Fridays are to be avoided just because of limited staffing. <coughs> We have thin staff okay. on Mondays. Fridays we're always closed, right. but if but we we have very thin staffing Mondays and Fridays. So I was okay. trying to emphasize that. Okay. Like when you came in today, um, we'll we'll figure out a way to make it work. And to Kim's credit, she's always um, pushing things through and figuring it out. But yes, um, if it can be avoided, yes. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays okay. are when we're really ramped up and fully staffed. Okay. We can always make it work the other days but okay I don't want you to come on a Friday and forget that we're closed right no I once almost did but then yeah. I was like I should call I have a feeling about Fridays yeah. we we have inspectors on Fridays yes right but you got to plan ahead yes. okay okay any other comments no? any comments from the public what's the decision here Does this include all of the updates, all of the updated materials? Yes. We made changes on the exterior and lighting. Where are you looking? Page yeah. three. The VI says no exterior lighting has been proposed. Yeah, I think that should say no exterior site lighting. Right, because that's you're going to have some exterior building lighting. Right. You just won't have site lighting. Right, so we'll kind of uh, we'll light the building a little bit, and we'll maybe we'll use the building to uh, light whatever we need to in terms of uh, achieving safety in the parking area during those kind of early sunset uh, days. But we will probably try to have nothing on poles. Uh, we'll just mostly focus on lighting on the building. Okay. Just, just make sure it's not sort of like a big blast of light. Sure. Facing the street. Okay, we'll make sure every we'll try to focus things kind of towards our own property, make sure that things are appropriately screened and hooded and directing the light only to where it needs to be and only when it needs to be on as well. Uh, you know, we'll obviously we'll make them, you know, whether it's uh, motion activated or just, you know, last person turns them off or uh, whatever's gonna be safest. Do we need that confirmed by somebody? Yeah. Well, what they're talking about really is safety lighting, and we, um, <coughs> um, part of the building inspector, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I would submit a fixture cut sheet with the material color yeah. to Eugene, mm -hmm. right? Um, but we've never, um, required safety lighting to be turned on or off at a, a certain time, or specifically excluded that from. My, my all issue has always been what do you call safety and what do you call light? If they put up a big spotlight on the third floor that's going to cover the entire back uh, parking lot, that might, yes, it's needed for safety, but is that really the appropriate light? Right. But that's not what they'll do because conservation will shut them down. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it would just be cut sheet lights. We wouldn't need a photometric plan if it's safety lighting, or do you still want a photometric? Well, I think if, if you're doing. The lights over the doors are just going to be basically those, those sort of wedge shaped fixtures that have it down. That's not going anywhere. That's not going to the site edge. Whatever you do on the back, if you start pointing, you know, wall packs out, then you might start hitting that back line. Mm -hmm. So again, just consider the fixture. I think that the administrative people will be able to see the fixture. Yeah. Okay. So we'll submit the fixture cuts along with the all, all of our other materials. Would you like us to submit those all at once, or as they come in, should we send them over? Is there a preference about that? Well, we're a little thinly staffed these days, so if you could do it however is simplest for staff to administer. Right. We'll okay. touch and I'll touch base. Yeah. 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 Correct. I believe 17 are required for parking spaces. Uh, B civil site I. Okay. Uh, 
I thought we just talked about the 17. 17 I required, yeah. So we're saying now 16 is not required, 17 is required. 17. Yeah. Yep. 5,100 square feet. Okay, so 17 is required as long as we have that waiver on the loading space. Yep. Well, I know I had a question about um, they want to the engineer wants to do a flow test for the fire water for the for the um, water for the fire line. Um, well, we'll need a uh, f we'll need an engineer to s to make sure to size that water line coming into the building. We'll definitely have a fire protection. It was a sizing issue, not a flow issue. Well, well, someone will have to do a hydrant test, and you have to have an you know, is it going to be a four inch line coming in? Is it a six inch line? I don't do that, but they'll, no, they'll, they'll. You know what I'm getting at, right? Yeah. You know, if you don't have flow, you've got to put in a fire pump and a generator and all that. You're not putting the building in anymore. Cause right. That's right. hundred thousand so, dollars. That's why I was asking. You're talking. It's, it's strictly just the size of the service, not because there isn't enough flow. That's right. That's the understanding. Tip, typically, I show like a four inch line coming in. There's been some cases it has to go up to a six once they do the hydrant flow test and make the calculations however they do it. Um, so there's still some work to do on that. Yeah, we'll bring on a uh, fire protection specialist to yep. handle all of that. That's usually one of the mechanical contractors we have when we put together our construction drawings. Exactly. <coughs> Any other comments? Have you seen this? Yes. Okay. So we will maintain that waiver for the one off street Parking space for the loading space. Yeah. I'll throw that in there. Didn't we, we granted it for the previous? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Definitely. The plan does not identify a designated loading space. Yeah. Does that mean that we can't use it for the loading space? It's no removal, it's not addressed here or in the original. Yeah, that's a civil site. Yeah. Under findings. No removal. Make a VII, I guess it's a snow removal. There's no storage is shown on one of the drawings. Excess snow will be removed from the site. I guess you have to do it two places. You have to say that the finding is the snow is going to be shown. Okay. And then on the addition. addition yeah. I'll throw a little back to snow. that the CPDC approve the major modification to the approved site plan for 306 Main Street as amended. Second. All in favor? Yes. Great. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. That site filled in, the bridal came up coming through. Yeah. There's my foil. Starting to fill in the, the gaps. Just like we planned it. 
forever ago. We knew they would come in with that, though, right? Like, yeah. Like, here or there, wherever yeah. they are going. Yeah. I mean, the, the Burger King has taken forever. I mean, the... They had all those structural issues. Okay. I mean, that... It was complete garbage. And it had the entire roof like that, or at least a significant portion of the structure. Yeah. It was a big problem. Yeah. And they took a long time to figure out the solution. Yeah, somebody must have determined that engineering was cheaper than just tearing the entire thing off, or, or tearing it off would have triggered so many other code issues that they yeah. didn't want to deal with. Yeah. I'm sure that's what it was. Yeah. But it looks good, so... It does look good. They thinned up the exterior site and all that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The sign's still there. Hopefully we'll think about what to do with that. Yeah. Well, also, I mean, the, with the with that cleaned up and so forth. I mean, the, the dental building, which is on Ash Street, I mean, the whole thing looks very nice. Well, the money was flying out when they demolished the building. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't forget that. Yeah. We're just waiting for Robin to get back. I don't know if Rachel. <laughs> you've noticed, but we have an open seat now if anybody would want to actually <laughs> donate their time and apply. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, trying to put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's how some of us came to the board anyway. We sort of started with an issue that was right around our neighborhood and then understood that there was, you know, there's a big town to deal with. So, all voices are welcome. So we've got some um, 40-hour design guidelines. I you know I sent in some comments. I don't see them here. Do you have them? I have them on the file here, but I did not get to print them. Okay, that's all right. We'll just bring them up as we get to, the, as we get to those sections. I don't know if anybody else has comments as well. So I would just solicit whatever comments you have right now. I mean, the first few edits are just corrections to uh, sections. So I'll keep in there. Those are my comments for blue. Up on the board. Mm -hmm. Peter's comment was to rework this, this guiding principles paragraph somehow. But I don't know what your intention or what is it that you were trying to get to. So. I unfortunately did not get to talk to her a lot about this. She finished late Thursday and it was out today. So <laughs> I didn't get too much input from her on what she got to do, so, and I rarely got to look over it today myself. Okay. <coughs> I'm going to try to just, we should just try to do this interactively, rather than waiting for us, waiting to solicit comments from you guys, so if you have something on a section that we're in, just please let me know. Thank you. I mean, this is not like a overarching statement mm -hmm. specifically about the mixed use development piece. So I think we can work Smith it a bit but the intent I, I don't yeah, I don't see much um, to change really. Yeah. Um, it, it looked like opportunities was added, but there's opportunities listed below so it would seem repetitive. Yeah. If you want to okay. clean it up, you can clean it up. Mm -hmm. Is this here? Um, thank you, Jonathan Barnes. Um, I mean, first of all, it was great to see this, and I want to thank, uh, I assume Jan was Julie for, for taking a cut at it. Um, so it was really good to see to see something that we could we could comment on. Um, I didn't get a chance, I, I'm thinking everybody, um, I say everybody quotes from, uh, from uh, Wall Street, um, and I know CBC um, didn't really have much opportunity 
Because I think I just first saw it today, and I think it had a date of three seven. So I don't know if it if it was up before that. Um, it was posted on Thursday. Last Thursday. 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 I saw it today, so I haven't been able to, to comment. I'd like to ask if we would be able to, I'm assuming you're going to have this on an agenda for a following meeting, I'd like to at least have the opportunity to provide some additional comments. And to that end, I guess I'd like to ask, I wasn't able to make any edits to this. I don't know what format it is, and forgive my, my ignorance about this, but is there any way to get it in a format electronically um, that I can make edits to? I don't know how... Oh, yeah, the, uh, add comments to a PDF. Yeah, you can add a comment to a PDF. It should be add a, as a comment. Okay, I just wasn't able to when I tried. Through Easiest today, thing on. on this. Okay. Yeah. In, in this is what you're viewing the PDF in. IT right. support ad going on. And not so, on your phone. <laughs> yeah, you can't do it on your phone. It's hard on the iPad. If you do it on a computer, you can add it. You do need the most recent versions of Adobe. You. The document can be viewed in an earlier version, but the comments require a later version. If you have Office 2010 or above, you can actually import the PDF into Microsoft Word and make your changes there. Oh, okay. Thank you. Do a save as and do a document. Yeah, document. okay. Thank you. Um, in, in this particular section, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll add it and take it for what is granted, uh, for what it's worth, uh, but I would have suggested in the uh, second sentence, I would reword that to say, um, and I'll, I'll add it, Andrew. Um, mm -hmm. You guys can then reflect on it however you wish. Um, new mixed use development should contribute to the overall mix of uses within the district, comma, support architectural design that marks Reading's identity, and then I would add, and respect existing residential uses without unduly encroaching upon them. Yes, we would add that too. <laughs> Good. Do you repeat that one more time? Sorry. Yes. Um, in that second sentence at the end, I would um, uh, I would just add uh, the new mixed use development should contribute to the overall mix of uses within the district, comma, support architectural design that marks Reading's identity, and then I would add and respect existing residential uses without unduly encroaching upon them. Building encroaching. Right. How do you define unduly encroaching? Yeah, against the well, I, I'll be happy to work on that, but I, I, yeah, and I yeah. appreciate that, Gene. I, I just found that a lot of the other words that were in in drafts of uh, CPDC regulations left a fair amount of discretion. I'd be happy to try to narrow that. I, that I made it good. very broad because I thought that would be more consistent with what you folks preferred, but I'll try to narrow that uh, and restrict it if I can. Well, I mean, perhaps all that we need is to in respect existing residential uses. You, you can continue to work on it. We'll yeah. see how it, what it comes out to right. be. Great. I'm just trying to, are you saying that the residential use or the residential scale? Uh, well, I was going to say residential neighborhood, but but I didn't want to get into a spat with Mr. Tuttle. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's talking about the mix. He's talking about the uses. So the uses. The project comes in and it has a mix of uses, and it, and uh, John is concerned. Everyone's concerned, really, is that the impact to the neighborhood from those mixed uses is not unduly burdensome. Somehow. Exactly. Obviously, in a downtown, you're likely to get a use adjacent to another use, and that's the way they have to live as long as they're done, it's done correctly, right? So mm -hmm. you potentially have a commercial use next door to a residential use, uh, and you can't resi you can't prohibit that. And so, so how do those two live together? So that's where we're trying to go. You can yeah. keep crafting that sentence. Thank you. Uh, Nick, I mean, and Jonathan as well, I, I also kind of wondered if we could do section 6.6. .6. I mean, we're, we're preserving, we're balancing, we're preserving historic resources, we're promoting sustainable development, and it almost feels like a, an actual section on the balance and the unity um, and the uh, um, relationship in that area with the residential area might merit its own section in the same way. I don't know if that's, uh, the uh, alternative would be to bring it into each of these sections in some way, shape, or form. I just I noticed it was missing, 
it almost felt like we were um, focused on the design to the sure. exclusion of, of the... So at this point in the process, I would be glad to entertain another paragraph there that tries to encompass more than just the one issue of encroachment, let's say, some other issues that are particular to how many of these things live together. Okay. Great. Compatibility. So let's call it a compatibility paragraph, right? And let's see if we can craft some language and what goes in there. And if it becomes redundant, then we'll we'll parse it down or something and we'll figure out what it's supposed to be. I did have some other some other thoughts in my head, some other words that I put down on paper before. I just didn't have the chance to add them here, so I'd be happy to, to give that a shake. And I obviously respect that your you, it's your design guidelines, so you all are going to have no, to... No, it's our design guidelines. Right. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's um, your design guidelines, so you'll have, you'll do with, with our suggestions whatever you think is appropriate. Sure. Um, sorry, did you have a... Uh, uh, you want to add something? Well, I just... I was trying to find uh, anything on shadow, because one of the things that uh, we're in fear of is that the other side of Green Street will get developed and it'll end up like in Wakefield where there's this kind of perpetual shadow. Like how, how, is there something here that's protecting against shadows being cast on the, on the houses? We're sort of relying on the sun to burn out at some point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know that we've got anything that's so tall that would ever, that's a really hard thing to do. We did it for the 40B on Lincoln. We made them do a shadow study. Yeah. Um, well, we just know, And they're casting a shadow. Uh, a 35-foot building will cast a shadow across the street and onto another building at the right time of year. So yeah. we can think about that. But because right now there's no shadow. <laughs> and those are what, three-story buildings? That are the apartment buildings that are there now. There's right. no right. shadow. And then the other you know, question... Well, there is a shadow. It's just not getting to the other buildings right. across the street. What, what I'm saying is there's no the shadow sidewalk. problem being cast on the residential houses on Green Street right now. Okay, but I would argue that there's a problem because it casts a shadow on the street, the street doesn't thaw, and that causes icing. So, I understand your point. Actually, when we talked about that side of the, uh, when we brought up the maps that we first talked about, mm -hmm. we pretty much were going to hold that edge to that height and no taller, I think. So we're already looking at what's there now, and, and the map that I... I remember you talking about it, but I just didn't see it in here, that's why I'm asking. Well, we didn't get to those kind of specifics yeah. yet, but I understand what your point is. I just, yeah. We've talked about shadows, I don't want to do all the talking here, by the way. Um, <laughs> we've talked about shadows before, and it gets really hard to start, start to get so particular with, you know, which hour, which day, which month, you know, where can it go, where can it go. Well, at, at the, the town meeting last week, I mean, we went ahead and... and spent a fair amount of time and modified the uh, st the existing statements about the shadow and the encroachment and so forth. So we've got that. Did it get specific? Because we kept it general. It did. Well, it, um, I think it actually got less specific. The discussion was to get it more specific, and it did not um, end up getting it. Because nobody knows specific. how to make it specific. It's very the, the only thing that became more specific was that it would that we also incorporated um, uh, not only uh, and, yeah not only sh not only addressing um, shadows on the building but addressing shadows on the lot um, res residential property yeah. adjacent yeah but when where how much how much is <coughs> of a shadow is okay versus not okay that was left um, yeah. not specific okay so do you point. guys think that that's shadow statement applies in here if we took that shadow statement and verbatim put it into this section would that work i don't think it's here i think i think but this no. last section is where i mean uh, did you see sorry i didn't there's mean a whole you. section at the back okay. that's much more specific i think the first section is more mission statement these are the principles that we're going to be following but I think th things like the shadows would fit nicely in these. So there's a whole section that Julie has um, started to draft here about the, the transitional areas, where the residential abuts, where we're going to see these um, issues come up. And so I think this would yep. fit into much more of these you know, design parameters, other considerations. 
if we want to raise it as a concept of this needs to be something that is looked at carefully and taken into account. Okay, so let's let's add the language that we that was approved. I mean. At the back end here, and see at how least it make bullet points that address some of those issues. Uh, I would think there would be a concern over residential property that is uh, uses solar panels, and if all of a sudden they're blocked because of a huge shadow, what does that mean to the? Sure, I understand that. But let's say you have a one-story cape with a full solar array on its. Right. on its roof and next door, immediately next door, especially in these postage stamp lots, is a building that can be 35 feet high. Right. You can't stop right now. that. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's the, right. yeah. So that's, that's kind of a concern. But I think, again, we were, we were talking about heights along that edge and how maintaining what's there seems appropriate because it's the least impactful thing. And, there are other parts of that site, for example, that can support taller. So why do it there when you can do it down the hill? Okay, so we'll add the language about sun shadows here in the back, and then we'll see how it reads and then figure out whether it's enforceable. Right, the next section was massing. Julie was asking about, well, she was asking us to consider a smaller minimum on the setbacks. I think the percentage of the building that had to be on the setback. Yeah, just in here. Um, I think what she was trying to get at was that if we keep pushing the building to the front of its property line, we don't have any opportunities for street side activity so like a restaurant that wants outdoor seating or some amenity you know benches or some landscaping and so she was suggesting do we consider a smaller minimum right now the minimum is 60 percent if you scroll up a little bit you'll see mm -hmm. we're down i guess you're scrolling down okay. so when you look at a building you know 60 percent of it has to be and this is not the configuration just that you know on total aggregate 60 percent is supposed to be at the setback line. Um, you mean that's a box? That's a box. You start with a box. You start with a box. But that's just to show you the math, really. Yeah. That's what these sketches were. And then you know, talk about punching it in when you want to mark some event on the building, like an entrance or some other sidewalk activity. So if you scroll back up, down, or up, yeah, sorry. <laughs> You're pulling the page down. <laughs> <laughs> I was suggesting that we add the word 60% aggregate. I don't know that we need to change that because we have the right to waive any of these conditions. And if you think about the development over at Sunoco and the initial, the original Gould Street development where they had the bays kind of kicked in and out, they weren't they weren't doing it the way some of our sketches show, you know, with a facade that steps back. They were punching the whole thing back and forth. And so that's a successful way to do it. So if someone came to us with something different than the box sketch, I think we could we could understand what they were showing us, right? But I did add some things here, like like the 60% doesn't need to be continuous. Mm -hmm. uh, step back portions don't need to be under cover. You know, it could be the entire height of the building goes in and out. And the idea that. I don't know why we need to state this, but I, I wrote that you know we can waive any of this if somebody comes up with a creative way to to solve this problem. So I thought that these things started to address what Julie is getting at. So in the um, residential use context, um, the residential use neighborhood—that's what we will call it. Um, uh, would we do um, if someone were to design this? Does that then create? Is that create a problem? Right. I, the way that we have it right now, are we forcing the street 
um, are we forcing a development um, to change the um, the feel of the street because we're 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 forcing them too far forward with this? So you're I, I'm not, no, I'm not saying yes or no. I'm just asking that question. But yeah. in your scenario, there would be residential residential units on one side of the street, yeah. and this development would be on the other side. Right. I mean, that's what we're that's that's why we're doing this is trying to figure out right, not to change the design guidelines, but see how they they fit in with these transition, you know, these yeah. transition areas. So Main Street. Main Street is everything at the front, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Avon Street, everything at the front. Right. Gold Street up to the newest, up to the new Gold Street one is to the front. Um, if you were to go on to Green Street, that's different because <coughs> even those, even those apartment buildings are set back. Mm -hmm. But they're not set back a lot, are they? They they are because what they do is they sloped. They, it's sort of a, a little Trump lawyer, right? Because they. They slope up somewhat so that it looks like it's a shorter building, and then I think that first level is half below grade or something, right? The land slopes up, and then there's some steps to get to the first floor. So buildings appear a little shorter than they really are. They're, but there, there's some land there. But yeah, I want to just focus okay. on green yeah. street, but yeah. to John's point, well. we. Trying to hold the street line, we call it the street line. Yeah. Because otherwise, you get you don't get enough mass to make it. Um, think about Wakefield, Wakefield yeah. downtown. Yeah. Right? yeah, that's really wide. Right. The buildings are tall enough where, you, where you're holding something. If those were one story, like parts of Malden Square, old Malden Square. You know, there's not enough height to really hold you in comfortably. I mean, almost a everything is pretty much at the, at the, at the line. You don't, have, you don't yeah. have enough depth to play like that. Yeah. You can't push yourself back, otherwise you don't have enough room to develop the, I don't the, see anybody real far back except for this site right here. Um, the one that's... Um, well, here, over here. But that's Main Street. The, ex the one that would not work in its conf current configuration is um, is on Gold Street. Is uh, old, yeah. Right here. But that's not okay. yeah. residential. You're looking um, at one of the yeah. plans. You're looking at your uh, height plan. Yeah. So, so, you, yeah. so uh, I guess. From that standpoint, it all works because even right now everything's up at the up at the street line. What that section is saying is hold hold this front line to make your presence known, but you're allowed to break away from that if you start introducing street level elements that engage the street. If somebody came to us, uh, let's say the, what is it, Eastern Bank, the, on the corner of uh, Golden Haven there, basically. No. Hey, TV, TV bank? The, it's the new post office. Yeah, right here. Yeah, yeah so that's, that's that, right? That's Eastern Bank. Oh, yeah. that one, okay. And I know I keep pushing for this, but if somebody came to us and said, I want to develop this site, and I'm going to make that whole front triangle an open green space, <laughs> and it doesn't comply with the 60% thing, we would jump at that, right? Great little park in the middle of our downtown. Especially, you know, if they could fit everything else that they wanted in there. So it's something we'd probably wait. Same thing. If somebody came back with a string of street side, you know, okay, a whole bunch of restaurants that are actually going to stay more than three years, you know, with outdoor seating or something, or some other use like that, I'm sure we would entertain it. Does it does not unless I'm missing something? Does not the second sentence allow for that, Nick? No. Yeah. It does, right? Yeah. 
<laughs> what I'm saying is we don't have to worry too much that we're being too restrictive because we can wave Wait, we can work with somebody who's had a chance to sit there and sketch something on a specific site with a specific use in mind. Where we're here trying to we're trying to dress up this box that doesn't go anywhere, and right. looking at you know a hundred different sites and trying to figure out what the best solution is for all of them. We just need what's the intent? The intent is to create an edge that holds you, you know, and, and makes you feel like you're someplace, right. not just some big suburban sprawl. You know, one house every two acres or something. What does New York City say? I mean, street side is the, the way to be. That's, you know, that's where we're at. It's not having too much setback and keeping the, the lines of the street as consistent as possible. Yeah. Yeah. than in Midtown when you can have those terrible plazas that people don't like those anymore. Yeah, well, we don't know how to use open space either, <laughs> right? We're certainly not adept at using open space, and then the weather doesn't always help us. Well, the weather doesn't help in Midtown either, so. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I meant by we, I meant as Americans. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, we don't understand that concept yet. And, um, too many years removed from Midtown. <laughs> They're still there. They still do. Years. They don't do the same thing quite as before. But all of those buildings were built at the same time. Um, was, the, the newer was, ones in, in Times Square are right up against the the front there. I was born in Manhattan, so yeah. yeah. Up there. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think this this front facade setback does anything that's detri detrimental to. Um, to residential use neighborhoods um, it probably actually supports that because all of those all those residential use neighborhoods and the transitions um, around all do this as well so yeah I mean I, I, I argue that the, that. Yeah. the parking lot in front of the eMark building was not the right thing right. to do right right and that's the one one um, unit one building that stands out is not and doing then that. it doesn't match the rest yeah. of the neighborhood so I'm good. Okay. Um, let's see this was a building setbacks and I'm, I'm hoping that you all have something to say about setbacks but um, yeah I had some I had a few things here. So I added a section, right? This last one in red. Um, I think I was saying so that when this is abutting a single or two family use, and we could reword this, but basically you, you got a maximum two story piece and then you have to step back. And then, so you're already 15 foot back from the line. Two story max and then another 10 foot minimum setback. Well, the, the question that came to mind was the, is 15 feet the right number? Now, I mean, if you look at the uh, Green Street, the historic houses, I mean, those are up close. I'm not sure that that's a 15 foot average. Uh, yard. I mean, it's the it might, house from its rear setback. The house, house from its rear line. The house from its fr from its street line. The I mean, we've got um, you, language talking. in the other uh, parts of the zoning where we've got the you know average front yard, if you will. You're talking about rear yard, though, right? I'm talking about sure rear and side. Now, I was just thinking about rear and side where you're abutting something that's different than what you're putting up now, right? Okay. Existing, smaller residential structure. Um, and I just quickly thought that through. I, I didn't work out whether the ratio one was doing the same thing or not. Right? I just I put in some parameters. Two stories, you, you come back from the line, two story max, step back again. 
um, is that providing uh, a steeper angle, more open space up against some? So right now, you could go at tw you can go 20 feet, but 45 feet high at 20 feet back. Um, so this actually provides less massing at that angle two to one that two to one angle keeps it a little bit more um, further away from its abutters two to one does yeah than what's currently allowed 15 not un it, it's currently allowed in the underlying zoning and, and if I remember the Gould Street they were able to go further than the 15 mm -hmm. based on the fact that the property line was fuzzy already, right? Mm -hmm. and so 15 wasn't quite enough in that area, and they were lucky to have a little extra room. Yeah, I don't know if any of these numbers are right. I'm just trying to think about Do you think 2 to 1 is, why wouldn't that be 30 feet high right at the 15 foot mark, right? to be looked at. The yeah. goal here was to try and figure out whether there is another profile that needs to be considered. Besides the three that are here right now. There are three in the guidelines. And do we need a third do we need a fourth one? Or language that language that makes the third one do something different when you know you're in some special condition. I think we all share that same concern. I I'll be honest with you, I didn't I, I saw it so close to the meeting that I literally just looked at the, the changes that were made and I didn't look at what was in black. So I didn't carefully review this. And Andrew, if I can, if, are you guys going to put up uh, the, the version of the changes on it? Because I don't have the one I had, didn't have this. Um, well, can you at some point then? These are my comments that I added to Julie's. Right. Document. So I'll leave that kind of up to discretion if we want to put it put it on the town website if you guys don't have a problem with it as long as you title it properly and it just that they, right. it's understood that these are my comments these right. were not deliberated by the rest of us yet. right right yeah then I can do that tomorrow that'd be great that'd be helpful for us yeah for sure but, but so right now the you know in there there is the this two to one or one to two ratio for side yard. When abutting a, re oh, when a, when abutting when abutting a residential, a residential district. district. And that's right. why we need that's the problem. And that's, that's right. yeah. And so, the, so, to, I guess in 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 my mind, this is the this is the right um, massing a, um, abutting a, a, a residential use. Um, but right now, we, it's just restricted to a, uh, a side yard um, for a residential district, which is a very small condition when when we think about all the with the with the bigger um, area, all the other times that this um, approach should be um, utilized. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Should, yeah. should it say residential district or use or whatever? And, and I think without getting into this that discussion, because I think it can, because uh, I we all know what we're talking about. We just need to narrow down and figure out the the appropriate language. But I think that this uh, shouldn't necessarily only apply to residential district. But what I keep referring to is a residential use neighborhood. Um, and whether it's those, whatever those property lines are that make that, that up, that abutting line, that transition line. It also shouldn't be limited just to the side yard, right? I mean, it's right. Side and back. Side and back, right. yeah. Yeah. Oh, the side and back or the, or the portion that abuts the residential? The portion, district. yes. The portion that abuts, yeah, whether, whatever that happens right. to be, right. as long as it's not the front. Well, it could never be the front. It has to be on the street. Right. Um, unless the district cuts at the sidewalk or something. Or does it 
Or is the abutter across the street entitled to this? Percentage? Well, so. that's where that's where what we were just talking about comes into play, with the everything set up to the street to the street line, and they're allowed at sixty percent not to be at the street line. Um, I mean, the first one is the first two. The first two sections up there are for the street side, basically. Yeah. And then the next one was supposed to be for the side yard. It only says side yard. So we'd have to decide whether we want that to be the rear yard as well, and then whether it should just say residential district or residential use neighborhood. So Whatever. just in general, just skimming, it yeah. says residential district pretty consistently around on the whole document. Right, right. right. because yeah. we got in, because if you remember, the neighbors came in and were like, oh, so, you know, we're a residential district. You're not a no. residential <laughs> district. And so, but it, that should probably be afforded the same sort of protection or, or consideration. So then either it has to be its own thing, residential use, right. is that going to be different? And we really need to be careful about that because we um, there are now um, or will soon be, you know, four-story residential uses. And just in and does this apply to that same four-story residential use? Do we want these? Yeah, that's why I wrote, right. by the way, single and two-story. Yeah. So we need to be. That that's very. Um, we need to careful. Is the word. Careful. Yes. <laughs> right. And we we may need to to specify when it's an adjoining an existing single or two-family residential property. It'll be something. Yeah. As specific as, as that. Specific, yeah. yeah. Yes. My other concern is for one way streets, which Gould and Green are both one way streets. And so when you were talking about the abutter across the street, it's it really is a concern because if when if, if say across the street they built a building right up to their property line, it would be well, I hope it won't happen because of the shadow effect, but also because there, it, since it is a, the Green Street especially, only that I've witnessed Green Street, but I'm assuming the same would happen on Gould, is that every time there is a medical emergency in those apartment buildings and they, a fire truck and an ambulance, they always park all on the dirt, you know, in front of those buildings. And, I, and so I think if there was a building all the way up front, it's going to create a, a... I don't know how we can do that safely because maybe you could talk to the fire department about this or whatever, but it, it, it's a problem. I mean, visiting nurses, they all, they're, they're, I'm asking them, they're, you know, they're visiting nurses are always on the dirt over there because so many of the people in those buildings are, you know, post rehab or something. So it's just, it's a concern. Well, remember too now, don't, don't be confused that the back of the sidewalk is not necessarily the property line. Well, I'm just, I guess when I'm just, I, I'm trying to think of like what could be the worst case scenario would be if you brought it all the way up. Because right now nobody respects that curb. People just drive right, and, and not even emergency vehicles to tell you the truth. Like people picking people up from the apartments pull up and, you know, I mean. Onto the dirt, isn't there a curb? Yeah. yeah. I can't understand that because they don't. You're talking about Green Street? Yes. Yep. There's no curb on the apartment side? There's a curb, there's no side. What? There's a side. Yeah, road it's, road it's road like. Side. It's a real low curb. <laughs> I mean, people, it's, it's, you know. Because of the, the four squat here, like, sorry. Mm -hmm. This? It's, um, can't really. Three stories? Yes, okay. yeah, in front of those buildings, yes, yeah. So on their, on their grass? Yes, on their grass. Dirty grass, grass yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You can see so you're grass. saying, so, so, so I'm just thinking when you're. We're picturing a sidewalk. And what she's she is making a clear point. There is no sidewalk on one side of the street. There is no sidewalk now. Yeah, correct. Okay. But so, and I, I would see that as you know, because I live in a neighborhood that has some sidewalks, some not sidewalks. So where is that lot line no, it's definitely that someone there. can <clears throat> can build up to? Is it actually the curb or is it no, the pretend it's sidewalk? The, there's a right of way. So from center yeah. of street, it's probably back five more feet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Should be able to find it. <laughs> Actually, just zoom in on the plan. No. Oh. Yeah, go back to your aerial for a second. Oh, <laughs> well, that's too far down. Yeah. <coughs> you have to go to the Washington apartments there. 
these guys here? No. Nope. You were right down there. Nope. No. Washington. No. I mean, uh, Green Street. Green Street. Yeah, it's the other side. Street. Behind Gould. Zoom out. You're on the other side. You're on the other side. You're on the other side of Main Street. Uh, seven seven o'clock. See those apartment buildings to the left? Left, 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 left. left. There you go. Now up, up, up. Three on top, right there. Yeah, right there. Okay, zoom in on that a little bit. <laughs> All right, so see the property line? See how far back that property line is from the edge of the sidewalk? Yes. Or edge of the non-sidewalk? Yes, yes, which works out really well. <laughs> Not the edge of the building, but the edge of the property line. So already you're, you're some distance back. I think that a development there would end up having sidewalks or maybe even more street parking or something. I don't know. We'd have to think about what was really going to go there before you address that. But. I just think in the case of a one-way street, there needs to be... Uh, there should be a little more setback so that the fire trucks can drive up there and not be running over, you know, <laughs> going into front entrance place and things like that. Because otherwise they just stop. Because there's there's always cars on one side of Green Street and there's only just enough room for an, one other thing. And so if they park in the street, then nobody could get by. And so they don't. It's, it's, it's an isolated case. And I just, since this is the time... <coughs> Well, I mean, the the issue there, though, isn't that it's a one-way street. It's that the the street, is the right of way, may not be wide enough to accommodate um, a, a a dense use. I mean, that's really the or something needs to be done to make sure that you know that the front. Um, so if you have a narrow a street, short, you're, you would say if the street's less than this many feet, then you need a little more setback? Is that what you're saying? You don't make it? No. no. I'm saying it's no. the street. No, no, I would not widen the street no. because then you get faster traffic and it's, <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. not going to be no. wide enough for that You want either. it to stay one way. Right. Yeah, yeah I mean, the, yeah. the fact... Special consideration, I think, for that I mean, area. The fact of the matter is that public safety is going to interrupt, you know, whatever is, is nearby. I mean, it's, whether it's a, a one-way street or two-way street or whatever, if the fire truck needs to be there, it's going to be there. And everybody else is going to have to, to work around that. It, it, I think the issue, though, because my street is not wide enough. It, I, it's, a, it's down by Birch Meadow. It's not wide enough. If there's, a, if there's an ambulance on there, no one else can get by because people park on the street. So it's not just, I mean, it, that happens around Reading. Um, the difference on my street is that we don't have, I mean, I could probably have lived there for 15 years or more. I can probably count the number of times that we've had a fire truck or an ambulance um, out there, and that's not the case there. And so really what the, right, right, really what the concern is not is the design, but does, that does a, a, a multi-tenanted use building um, have the facility to accommodate what you would know is going to happen. Um, so, I mean, that's more of a site, site plan review thing, isn't it? Yeah, but it also, I think, Not this a, is, your, your point is that your neighborhood has a different character than this neighborhood. Right. And yep. that's something that we started with at the beginning with the design principles. This is a mixed use yes. area. And so, these things are going to happen more frequently in a mixed-use area when all of these different uses are yeah. pushed up against each other. And so there has to be some, I, I don't know how to work it into the language, but I hear you in that we have to think about tight quarters. And tight quarters mean something different than yeah. a, a, yeah, yeah, a one-way yeah, street yeah, and yeah. a tight street yeah. over there. So if you're... My initial plan, my initial look at this this area, I looked at these apartment buildings first because it was one of the easiest sites to look at. I wrote on my notes that this was residential only. So this would not be a mixed use edge. I saw that. Because I just don't see how to support it. Yes, it would be great little walkable, you know, little boutique shops or something, on but this street, no. it's not gonna work there. You know, it doesn't <laughs> work there. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's just residential only, and so I would say that this probably has, probably hold that same edge, because there's a lot of room on this lot for them to accommodate whatever development would happen here. 
right? There's there's taller buildings down on Washington Street, and, and I was originally thinking that they wouldn't support commercial either because you can't stop a car there, but Robin, to Robin's point, she's like, this would be a great little walkable section. So oh, yeah, definitely. any commercial stuff would happen on the, on the Washington High Street side. It would not happen on the top side. So that takes away some of the density, some of the traffic, some of the space concerns you need. And then reworking the interior circulation of all of that could make it so that the you know the emergency apparatus or the visiting nurses could actually enter the enter the site and serve it from there rather than the Green Street side. If we provided parking, for example, on that Green Street side, that's where they would park. But if we don't put parking there, then maybe it'll happen on the other side. So that was so what you just said brings up the point that I was confused about with this document is that we have made some thoughts on what we think should be happening on the map. Yep. And I don't see it as specifically in this document. Not yet, because I think initially we started talking about sub-districts. Very way back, we right. said sub-districts, right? And then we realized that sub-districts were probably not going to be the way to do it. Correct. And so we have to have guidelines. Where we say things like, in an existing residential neighborhood, you can only do this, or you have to do that. Right. right, and so that so what I was going to say is that I feel like this whole thing needs a read with the map next to it so that there is language that makes it clear that Green Street does not support massing super close to the cur to the lot line. I agree. <coughs> Start writing it. Yay! <laughs> no, but we've always agreed to that kind of stuff. We've always believed in that. Um, and we, we asked, you know, what is the historical nature of that street? Does it have to be held that way? We don't really have any real capital H historic Coming soon. I, I have to tell you, I've been researching this for months, and I have so many great historical... Yeah, I know, but those great little stories, they don't hold water when you go capital H. You know, this building has to stay like this, or this massing has to stay like that. It's more like, give us a sense of what was here. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And so we that won't let us control it, I don't think. We can control it in here. Go ahead, Virginia. So do, does that mean a historic district would take care of that? Well, because we did protect Summer Street, that uh, Summer Ave that way, right? Right. Um, do you have the? Um, is, the is there is there enough here to actually get a historic district that has? You can do sing, You can do single family start a uh, single structures as a, uh, a historic district. Somerville is loaded with. Well, what does that protect? Tell me what that protects. It offers that a property. review process. For the property, but yes. not next door or across right. the street. Right. 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 So that's, that's a concern. Certainly, if there's a building there of value protected, I mean, there's one on Green Street, right? I mean, on Gould Street on the opposite side. And I, and I just see my concern would be the opposite. I think it would be lovely if that whole street had a similar character, but that means that you'd have to do something different with those three boxes. And so making the historic district before that's done would well, make it so you couldn't. But that those buildings yeah. could never be in the historic district. Right. Mm -hmm. So okay. across the street, one of the houses might be, maybe the one on the corner or something, or the little ones on the left here. Mm -hmm. But so whatever so, happens there, those end up looking just like they do now, maybe. But these three apartment they, buildings... They wouldn't get pulled into the envelope no, of the historic district. how you get that passed. Well, just to be devil's advocate for a second, um, there is a, an identity to more contemporary structures as well. Now, I'm not suggesting this is done. We should do that. But those apartment buildings are historic because it shows a change in the character of the community. We could write up a whole thing on that. Yeah, you lose all credibility. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Christopher, the Christopher's <laughs> building, you know, the historic nature of uh, Christopher's uh, restaurant there on the corner of Maine and Haven, yeah. you know, the 50s are modernist historical building. That's got value. This does not have value, other than providing an affordable house for somebody, which they do. <laughs> yeah. These are probably some of the more affordable housing we have in town. We, we shouldn't just give up on this. <laughs> no, they are. Uh, there's, there's no, there's no value to that architecture. <laughs> well, how is this area zoned? Business B. Downtown Smart Growth and Business B. Right. So, which is what I thought 
we had discussed before. So, are are you comfortable with with the assertion that I think you had said earlier that these should be residential, or, or that development should be residential? I think those top three should be residential only. That limits them to thirty three feet, right? That uh, we but have. How do you do that in a business in a business in a zone business? Because you can't build residential in the business district. You can only do it with the forty R. And the 40R gives us design guidelines which have teeth, whereas no other zoning does, right? And, 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 you're, and you're comfortable that, it, that if a developer came in with a proposal that included a commercial, that with the current design guidelines, you, you guys could hold that and say... Uh, you know, your, your statement was um, that we have to come up with something that is more clearly... Um, uh, to, to show that something isn't detrimental to the neighborhood, I can't remember your language exactly. Yeah. Right? I think we could clearly show that if somebody wanted to put a string of commercial properties on Green Street, okay. that it wouldn't work. Okay. Right? We could, day one, they'd walk in, oh yeah, we're going to put a uh, mixed use. Here's a, a bunch of storefronts and three, three levels. That's great. Money. No, I, I agree. That's, that's great. That's great. As mm -hmm. long as you're comfortable taking that position. <clears throat> that, and defending them. Not. That one's undeniable. Yeah, Green Street can't support that. Agreed. And the eastern portion of Gold Street can't support it. Yeah. Either. Yeah. Okay. Great. But that corner could. Corner could. Yeah. And so could the whole Washington piece. <laughs> and I'm not so sure about the piece of the building on Ash Street. Ash Street. Yeah. The traffic works there. The one. That one, the vertical one. Yeah. Well. Yeah, it depends what else happens on that on the, the, the interior of that site. Yeah. Well, okay. Let's step back just a little bit. The um, this is a downtown smart growth district, which is a very carefully defined existing area with known streets and known character and known situation and so forth. We should be able to write the guidelines to say, um, include a, start off a, a paragraph or section saying, uh, existing properties on Green Street are, or the north side of Green Street are single family residential, and then have some uh, considerations for that specific area. I mean, it's, we don't necessarily have to go to the sub district. Um, as identified by DHCD. We're not going to. Yeah. That's right. But, but we should be able to right? include in the, the guidelines the statement of existing conditions and what, what we're looking for, looking to preserve. For example, the, the whatever the pre prevalent setback is for that string of historic houses is much more important than some arbitrary 22 feet from the from the property line right we still have to be careful I think I remember you saying something uh, at the last meeting what if somebody of those owners wants to renovate their own right. lot? Well, there's, there's one in, in process now that's almost right. completed so in well, the same way that we've all talked about this before I think we need protection with flexibility yeah well but that's it's to a certain extent it's built into the zoning because there's the all of the uh, redeveloping an existing structure, you know, is you can just tear it down and, and rebuild the same thing. I mean, that's a uh, by right. And there's a lot of, of the, the uh, portfolio of other kind of circumstances where if they want to, you know, improve the house, make an addition, so on and so forth, there's ways to go ahead and do that. If they want to tear down a house, and put in a gas station. That's a different story. <laughs> Can you just flip through the rest of these comments real quick? I think the rest were we minor have... edits until the end. I think the, the, the real big piece is at the very end where yeah. we talk about some proposed language for the transitional areas on yeah. page 20. Yeah, I'd go right. It's kind of the meat of what's in here. Can we maybe go for another five or ten minutes and yeah. then wrap up? Yep.
is this the section where you become more clear about the specific neighborhoods? I think so. I think we're going to have, uh, let's see. Yeah, transition, the definition of tra transitional yeah. area, mm -hmm. yeah, directly adjacent to a lot containing a single two family dwelling. Yeah. So here you have a bunch yeah. of language that talked about either specific types of neighborhoods or specific neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And I think we can do that. Yeah. yeah. I think actually this. Well, I think you would be allowed to do neighborhoods, i.e., say the houses on Green Street have to have these requirements because that's basically some district. Right, but don't I forget think DHCD has to sanction these guidelines yeah. as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. But I think that we get there the same way, yeah. almost the way that it's you know the, the way it's headed right now gets pretty close to there because we we essentially. You know what those conditions are, um, anyhow. And each of these are unique enough that the yes. definition yeah. will cover itself or will exclude yeah. other places because of the definition. Andrew, did you check other 40 yard districts? Is that what yes. it right? So, a lot of this language came from other town design guidelines Swampscott, Brockton, Linfield, Plymouth, um, a variety of them, but as me and Julie went over them, they didn't exactly apply to our design guidelines specifically, so that's why some rewording was done by Julie. Um, because like, if you look at one from Swampscott, it states, wherever it abuts existing development, new development practices shall incorporate the design transitions between new buildings and existing. Um, that got tricky because then it kind of falls into dominoes as what's next to it, what's not, and then you'd have a string of continuous types of buildings. So that wasn't worded exactly how we liked it. Um, you look at Plymouth, relationships to abutting areas. They asked for a lot where um, they asked, mixed use buildings shall be visually buffered from adjacent single family resident uses with a 20 foot buffer including combo of deciduous and evergreen trees and fencing minimum height of six feet. So yeah, a lot of towns go... Yeah, this is only 20 feet. Is right, crazy. that's yeah. right. We can't do 20 feet, no. so there's no way. Um, but we're off looking at more urban areas, mm -hmm. like right. parts of Cambridge and parts of downtown Concord. And, um, <coughs> not, that, not that that's urban, but denser pieces. And then we can take that and bring it back to where we think we're ready. Okay. And I would ask uh, Jonathan and Virginia, if you could look at this, not just from a general planning standpoint, but from a historic standpoint, what kind of language would fit in here under the, not capital H, sure. to uh, to invoke some of that, to protect some of that? Sure. I, I took the liberty of sending it to the, to the other historical commission members um, today, and we have a meeting on Wednesday. So start that conversation. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you come up with a paragraph and we're like, this is never going to fly, it's not, right. it's not zoning, then we'll either try to get the gist of it out of it or we'll have to just scratch it off. It's a big deal. Would you entertain, I mean, the, the way that section is worded now, I'm mean, just a quick thought as we were talking about this. Which one? Do numbers? Um, that, the whole 10.0, okay. it, 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 it's standards, um, it's guidelines, currently apply similarly uh, to district edge areas as well as transitional areas and I'm the thought I just had the thought that maybe if you separated them out and had different uh, different guidelines that apply specifically to the transitional areas because it's the transitional areas that are the, the residential the ones that that approach upon residential. Whereas not necessarily the district edge all do. So maybe maybe you could have certain guidelines that applied only to the, the district edge or, or certain guidelines that applied only to the transitional areas rather than to both. And then maybe we could all be a little bit more um, specific in terms of what we're, what we're what's really driving this, which is the needs um, to accommodate the residential um, areas. I think it's almost entirely residents around the district edge, which is why. Oh, yeah. yeah, I would think, okay. I, I, I would, as you were saying that, I would actually think we, we need to just revise the, the, um, the 
definition as, of district edge to really be focused on to sort of exclude those district edges that are purely gotcha. commercial where okay. that's not okay. that applicable. I didn't look at um, that. I didn't look yeah, that. I think. Okay. Um, but points this I think probably get there the same way, mm -hmm. um, one way or the other. Because I'm, I guess to further, I'm not sure that we we necessarily want to thinking about those residential edges. I I think that we want to treat those the same as the in, in internal edges, the transitional areas. I yeah. I think, yeah. but that's something you may want to think a little bit more about is whether those are the same or whether there really is some difference between those residential edges and the and the the ones that are internal. I agree, and, I, and to that point, I know you want to you want to wrap it up, but um, in in the in the second in the definition of transitional area, uh, in the third the third um, category where it says is directly adjacent to a lot. I I was thinking in my head about just taking out the word directly and, and have it be adjacent, um, because directly means I think it it literally it, it, it abuts it. Yeah. So, so, what does adjacent mean? Right. Well, adjacent was just a little bit more general. For the industrial zone, so that adjacent was also defined just across the street. Across exactly. The street. Okay. Well, actually, I think we changed to shares a lot line width. Yes. Right. And I was trying to get away from that. Okay. Okay. Adjacent so, could be across the street. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, just a thought, but but we'll we'll work on that. Nick, thank you. Okay, thank you all for like, uh, mm -hmm. continuing the discussion. Will this be on the next agenda, or I mean, the next meeting, or uh, and I'm not, I'm not trying to the agenda for June 11th is filling up pretty quickly, so there's no promises that we would have time to discuss this at the end. That doesn't mean you can't but, submit your comments. Right. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, it will probably be on the agenda again as other planning topics, but it might be continued again to the next meeting. Okay. So, so probably, I just give, probably not, if it does come up, we probably won't have time to have a robust right. conversation. Right. Right. Exactly. So. Well, we very much appreciate the, the opportunity to interact with you on this. So, so thank you very much. Good. I know it's yeah. good for everybody on that. Yeah. Can we get a motion? Yeah. Second. All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Have a good night, Gene. You know, you never told us.